With age comes wisdom, experience, and a whole lot of unexpected changes. Welcome to Dad Brain, where two best friends share their journeys through the ups and downs of their 30s. Get ready for the raw and honest realities of growing older. Here are your hosts, Matt K and Matt L. Welcome back to Dad Brain. Today, we welcome the hilarious dad jokester, Tyler Champagne, to the studio. Uh, welcome, Tyler. Thank you, guys. What's going on? How are we? Doing well, doing man. Fantastic. Um, so, you were telling us you had a pretty, uh, pretty strong weekend. Yeah. So, went golfing yesterday uh, with some buddies, um, you know, drinking outdoors. Um, and basically just throwing money into the woods, essentially, is what I'm not a good golfer. Like, I've shot under 100 once. If So just that's the level I'm at, right? I'm good enough to play where I can, you know, not go through six sleeves of balls at this point. But it's anyways. So just an excuse to drink outside. My, my mother-in-law was, was staying with the baby, so I had the full day off. Uh, my wife was out it's with beautiful. her friend watching the Barbie movie or whatever people with uteruses do. <laughs> And so, yeah, yeah, we were, were buddies after we decided we were going to watch UFC fights. Um, and I came up with a UFC drinking game that I actually played once before back when COVID first started. Um, and it's a disaster, let me tell you. So, because it's all chance. It's all luck. So, basically, you just, you, ass- you randomly assign uh, whatever fighter, one fighter to a side of a coin. And you just flip a coin. And then that's your fighter. So okay. you kind of you have you have a little stake in it for the for the fights that you know you don't necessarily care about. So you basically randomly are selected a fighter that's your fighter for that for that fight, and yeah. the outcome determines how much you drink. The problem is, is that when I played it before, it was fine because you know it's only it's only like one shot if the fight goes the distance type thing, and it's a decision. The problem is. There was like I don't think there, a single fight went the distance last night. They were all knockouts or TKOs, I think. Man, uh, they were all so for, quick. Uh, wasn't uh, Jan's fight? Was, Jan and Pereira wasn't. Didn't that one go without a split decision? Right. Yeah. So I think there was what four of the five fights I think were either a knockout or a TKO, and yeah. I my fighter lost three of those four. So I was just oh. constantly doing <sighs> double shots basically the whole night. <laughs> After so being out all day. After being out golfing all day in the sun and the mud because it was raining up here for, so we actually I went, I ended up going to a different golf course than what we had originally planned. We got a rain check and it was just, yeah, I think the fact that I knew I didn't have to go home and put my kid to bed and, you know, I, my, uh, my dad responsibilities were almost zero for the day. So I just, I just went after it and I tore into it. Uh, it's not something I'm going to do again for a while, probably. <laughs> You know, Matt K, he's been a pretty active golfer, like to the point where it's basically been consuming the content of this podcast. And uh, you're kind of giving him some hope here because he hasn't had his child yet. He's due in November. Oh, so, so, yeah, very good. I, I'm just I'm trying to pack like as much. I'm also into like shooting sporting plays like that. So I'm trying to pack as much into my week and weekends as possible, which I feel bad for my wife because I'm never home right now. But I'm like. In November, I'm not going to be able to fucking leave. I won't. Yeah. There will be no, not. I won't be able to do any of my hobbies for at least a year. So I'm just trying to load it all up. Oh, you'd have to, yeah, for sure. When you have when you have that support though, like you know, you said your your mother in law watched your baby, like that helps so much though, right? Just to oh, take that burden off. It's you know she's been she's been awesome. Um, you know she stayed with us a few days a week for the first almost a year, um, which, you know, was tremendously helpful. You know, my wife had a little bit of, um, you know, a bit of the postpartum sort of, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it was the depression. Maybe, um, it could have been that, but you know, it's, it's an overwhelming thing. And I was only off, I only took two weeks off from work. So I was back to work full time after two weeks Yeah. and, you know, thank God for, I don't know how people do it without, you know, family or friends or, you know, pa- their parents helping out. I, I, I don't know how people do it. I don't know how single parents do it either. I mean, Jesus Christ. It is. I, just, I get like anxiety thinking about it. Like, if you don't want me to ask, so you're a pretty big influencer. You've got a bunch of followers on TikTok and Instagram. I mean, you're hilarious. So I see why it comes about. Are you doing this full time? You said you have a full time job. 
Yeah, I, this is what... this is you know the comedy and content creation thing. It's just a hobby, really. It's you know I do I do have a full time job in the automotive industry, actually, of all things. So it's uh it you know it th- this takes up a lot of my you know a lot of my free time. But again, it's you know it's being a dad. I I'm coming up with all this stuff while I'm being a dad. You know what I mean? Like all these all the stuff that I'm doing, you know, you, you can kind of see what phase I'm going through as a parent based on what my videos are, yeah. you know, like back, you know, back when my son was, you know, f- five or six months old, he had a lot of reflux and stuff. So a lot of my videos were about, you know, him throwing up <laughs> or, you know, you can see when there's a sleep regression happening. Cause all my videos are about, you know, lack of sleep or when there's an eating change or he's, you know, switching from, from purees to solids, all that stuff is, is you can kind of see exactly what state I'm in as a parent because that's what my videos are about. See, yeah, you... Tyler, I feel like I'm in the honeymoon stage right now, man. I got a nine-week-old. Oh. And all she does is, you know, eat, sleep, and smile. Yeah. So I'm like, if, if this is what it's like, I'm <laughs> like, I got this. But then I watch your content, and I'm like, oh, no, man. Like, it's it's going to get hairy quick here. Oh yeah. That, that four month sleep regression was like, I I was in the same boat as you, you know, I was, you know, once my son was past the stage where you can kind of let them sleep through the night where you don't have to wake them up to feed, he slept through the night. He would sleep 12 hours a night for, he did it for like three months. And I was like, what are people complaining about? (laughs) And then that four month sleep regression hit it, it. So it hit, and my wife and I had COVID at the same fucking time. All that hit oh. the same week. So wow. I was, so I got COVID first. So, you know, can't really be, we didn't want the kid to get it. So I'm literally in the house for five days or whatever. Um, double masking around the kid so I could at least still put him to bed and stuff. And then I was sleeping separately. My wife was actually sleeping on an air mattress in his room. Um, he was still in the bassinet at the time. And then she got it for me so then we had him in our room and we were just he was up you know he was waking up every 90 minutes wow for like weeks and then it's that changed it and he you know he's he he s's through the end you know what i'm saying i don't want to say even say it out loud (laughs) um because it you know it happens out there it happens very rarely now and he's 18 months old so from four months to 18 months it's you know, the sleep has been, but I'm getting better at functioning on it. You know, it's, yeah. uh, he, he does know, I don't know how, but he knows when I plan on going to the gym in the morning. He's, and then he goes, ah, I don't fucking think so, buddy. He goes, you want to, <laughs> he wakes, he always wakes up when I have a gym session booked. Cause I do, I do F45, which by the oh, way, yeah. I find awesome. Um, as a, as a parent, you know, I, I used to go to the gym and you know, you know oh, today's chest day or whatever. I just don't have the time or the motivation anymore. So doing something like F45 is fantastic because it's quick. You're in, you're out. Uh, you know, it's a great, you know, full body workout. Or there's, you know, there's some that are focused on weights, some that are focused on cardio. But every time I book a class, I do I do the 5.30 a.m. classes. Every time I fucking book one for 5.30, he's up from like 3 to 4.30. He knows. <laughs> he knows. He's just waiting for you, man. He's not allowing you to go out that door. Uh, 100%. You know, Speaking of that, like one of the things I've prioritized is like, I don't want to have a dad bod and I'm not shaming dad bods. Okay. Like, but I want to be able to be physically fit for my daughter. So I recently got a Peloton. So okay. now like, oh, I don't have to have the, I fell for it, man. Like I am drinking the Kool-Aid confirmed. And basically like now I, I was doing hot yoga where i was doing what you were saying like waking up at 5 30 in the morning and you know doing that but now i got this bike that i just stare at every time i'm going to the fridge to get something to eat makes it a lot easier to just jump on and do a quick 45 minute bike ride yeah true they should have a thing where like the peloton shames you <laughs> yeah. like the screen like that you know face pops up on the screen it's like wow another beer huh like they should have that should be a, a mode that they have i think that would be very effective it's you know I, it's not nice but i think it would be very effective i have a gym not five yards from me in my basement but the problem is i have a bar right next to it so every time i come down to their use it, i go oh fully stocked beer fridge Look big tv nobody else is down here 
That's poor planning, Matthew. You no, know, I used it for about three weeks after I built it, and then. <laughs> When, when Tyler was just talking about the Peloton shaming, I was thinking of, you guys remember Tamagotchis? Like, where it would just, oh, like, yeah. alert die. you that, like, that thing's about to die and, like, need to pay attention to it. Like, that's what that reminds me of. I'm yeah, like, well, it's, it's like your Apple Watch, right? If, you know, it's, uh, I don't wear it. I don't actually wear it anymore. I only wear it for working out. I call it my anxiety band. I just don't like being that connected <laughs> to things. I just, I, I actually had to stop wearing it because it was just too much. Uh, but it it basically it kind of does that same thing. It shames you. It's like you, it's like it's uh, you know eight fifty, and you've been sitting since before eight. So why don't you get up, fat ass, and go for a walk around a bit? Like it does yeah, shame you a little. I'm like bit. that's work. I was like I, I'm working. <laughs> like yeah. you know, sorry yeah. during the day I work and sit at a desk. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. I don't even wear it anymore except to work out. So that's 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 my latest thing for my you know mental health is is trying to stay off my phone reducing notifications and then not wearing my apple watch actually so do you set up the screen time on your phone because that's another thing that's been a concern for me is like my daughter like seeing me being on my phone and stuff i need she's nine weeks right but like still like i've tried to limit it um with like just a screen time reminder so i have an hour of social media every single day and that's through all the platforms Oof, and it I don't goes even know if I could, quick. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't even know. I I use that up in like two shits. I think. <laughs> like that would be. Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, well, how shits. am I going to finish? If I, if I have to have, a, you know, if I had some Mexican food or jerk chicken the night before and I have to have a third shit, I'm going to have to read the fucking toilet paper bag or something. <laughs> the like, ingredients I, of the toilet paper. Yeah, what's in this? Yeah, I don't, I, I, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I just try to, you know, just. You know, the old fashioned way by actually just not looking at it. Um, yep. um, Set but it down. It's, yeah. But the, the other thing, too, is that, like, my, I was talking about screen time actually yesterday with one of my buddies. And uh, it's, so I listen to, like, podcasts and stuff, like comedy podcasts and stuff on YouTube to fall asleep at night. But I don't have YouTube premium. So I, my phone's on. So it adds, like, an extra, if I, if I fall asleep with it on, that's an extra three hours of screen time. So I'll look at my phone and be like, oh, my God, I had nine hours of screen time yesterday. But, like, it's it's because of YouTube. I'm blaming YouTube. And yeah. then sometimes those long ads come on where it's, like, a three-and-a-half-minute ad for, like, Windex yeah. while you're so, trying to just listen to a podcast. There's – I saw this because we listen to, you know, some music and stuff. We'll have it on YouTube in the in the kitchen because, um, my you know, while, while my son's playing around or whatever, we, like, listening to music and stuff. And sometimes there'll be an, – an ad will be an entire song from some shit artist that paid, like <laughs> – I yeah. don't know how much it costs to have a four minute ad in the middle of a Morgan Wallen song, but like, it's gotta be a lot of money and it's the entire right. music video. What Spotify does now is they trick you. They, you think a song's playing and then it goes, if you want to hear more songs like this from so-and-so upgrade to Spotify premium. And I'm like, you motherfucker. I like that yeah. song. I have Spotify. Premium. But then you don't it's, hear it for hours. It's Spotify premium is, is, comes in pretty clutch. I will say I'm not an yeah, Apple music Spotify's guy. Pretty- Oh my goodness, Spotify. man! You gotta get on Spotify Premium, dude. I know. Yeah, dude. What are you doing? You have a you have I mean, a you have a gym next to a bar, and you don't have Spotify <laughs> Premium. Like, you need I know, to really prioritize not. your shit. One thing about this guy, though, Tyler, like his level of like music knowledge. Like, I'm a former wedding DJ. I've been a DJ for 15 years, and bars and all that stuff. So, like, music is like what takes up most of my brain space. But this guy right here, it's like the exact opposite. So to hear he doesn't have Spotify Premium, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Okay, it does track. It does track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, my go-to music when nobody else is around is Rage Against Machine or like random heavy metal that even I don't know who's singing it because I don't really listen to it. It just gives there me a go. vibe. <laughs> but go, going back to the screen time thing, when you set up the screen time, I think this was designed by crackheads at Apple. Okay, because the three options for screen time are one more minute, 15 minutes or turn off reminder for today <laughs> so it's like a quick fix yeah what are you just... gonna do in one minute <laughs> <laughs> i need to like these titties real quick double yeah. tap <clears throat> close oh, it out one minute oh yeah <laughs> i'm still at that point with my wife you know we're nine weeks postpartum and it's like that's still off the table she's like i got ripped in half dude like you need to wait yeah that whole, by the way that whole six week thing is fucking bullshit i think Thank you. There's no, then there's people that, you know, I, so, excuse me, this Canada dry is, 
uh, causing me to burp. Sorry. I'm <laughs> professional. Um, so the, um, you know, when my, when my son was first born or when my wife first got pregnant with him, I, I downloaded the what to expect app on my phone and I, I signed up with my email. So I get the emails with, you know, it's like, I think it's almost daily of like the forums or whatever that's happening, which is oh, yeah. the most insane fucking conversations and things ever. Like sometimes I read through them just for like entertainment. Like I used to do it for like, oh, what are other people going through? You know, that's what it's meant for. But mm -hmm. there was one post once where this lady, the title of it was my husband can't stop masturbating in the garage. <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> why are you coming to a baby forum for help on this? Like people will, will air out their dirty laundry in this, in this forum. Like, oh, I think my husband's cheating with the neighbor and stuff. Like in the what to expect oh, yeah. forum. It's like, That's, it's bizarre. We do a whole bit about that because all the dads helping dads and dad advice group has literally all that. It's one, I can't stop doing drugs now that my, even though my kid just is born. Or two, my wife's fucking the gardener or something. <laughs> Or I'm the gardener and, you know, yeah. and I'm cheating on my wife with the boss. Like, it's all, and I'm like, holy shit, dude, how many people have this much? My life is so fucking boring compared to these people. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes I read through it and I just go, what is wrong with these people? Like, you're that telling was... everyone on the internet that your husband can't stop jacking it in the garage? Like, <laughs> and they Jesus. don't post anonymously. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I know these people. You're, you're like, like hey, I'm that's my saying. neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder he won't let me in the garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I wish he would at least do it with the door closed. <laughs> we had a whole entire hypothesis that like this was only a women thing, right? Matt kind of alluded to it, but then we we started joining all these dads helping dads groups, and we did a whole entire segment called Ask a Dad Brain, where we would just like put the post up and give them the worst advice possible. And I mean, they were asking like really candid things that you shouldn't be sharing on such an open forum. Yeah. Because when my wife was pregnant, she was like sharing all this stuff with me and she shared one with me. She's on all these Facebook groups um, for women that had babies in May. And one of them was like, um, when is the er, like, when is the right age to get like your daughter's ears pierced? Oh, I'm and, sure that like, caused a shitstorm. Bro, they were like, you're mutilating your child. They, How about if they don't want to have their ears pierced? Like just going back and forth over this oh my favorite one is they'll be like my child's five weeks old and won't stop crying my, somebody told us to give them cereal in their milk but the doctor said that's a bad idea our doctor's full of shit and i'm like what the fuck you're asking no, a bunch of morons on facebook who are cheating on their wives if the doctor's full of shit yeah the doctor's trying to keep your baby alive ma'am also babies cry you know yeah Oh, there's there's topics I don't even do videos about specifically because I know the shitstorm it's going to cause. Like yeah. the one I did, oh, yeah, we... the one I did recently about the strollers or sorry, the wagons. I don't, like I almost didn't even post it because I was like, I have a feeling it, it got onto wagon talk or whatever, and it was like it was a mess. People, I had one lady, so I said that you know it, it was some big fancy. Basically, the whole point of the video was like. I can't believe how fancy wagons have got, right? When we were a kid, it was like that that rusty red metal one that would give you a blood disease and blah, blah, blah. I had blah. that one. Yeah. I mean, yeah we, we talked with Mark Anthony about that, actually. Yeah. We're all in agreement. <laughs> but now they have like, you know, fucking canopies and they got air conditioning and all this shit, right? And I said that, you know, I showed a picture of one and I said that the, the price of it has a comma in it. And some lady goes, that's incorrect. You're price shaming or something. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? She basically berated me in the comments for saying because the one in the picture was like eight hundred bucks. Okay. The one there was a four seater that's twelve or thirteen hundred or whatever. She's like, you showed the wrong one. This could discourage people. All this stuff, and I was just like, you you can't oh you can't say anything. Sometimes no. it sounds it's, like big sounds like big wagon was commenting. Yeah, that's <laughs> we could have. Do you been, work for a wagon company, lady? Jesus Christ! Yeah, do you yeah do you price wagons professionally? Is that your job? Because it was uh, it was just like that one. I I almost turned the comments off on on that wagon because it went crazy on TikTok crazy. and and Instagram, and it was just like a lot of people were laughing, which is the point of my content. It's just like laughing, relatable, whatever, and then people just take it too seriously. Like, I don't know what's going on lately. I feel like the comment section 
of social media has gone off the rails in the it, last few it months. It seems like people just want to be dicks. Like we ran into that, like talking about like how we like Moana and how we can't wait to have kids so that it's not weird that we like Disney, some Disney movies. Yeah. And we had a lot of people like, you know, calling us like all these weird names. And I'm like, what the hell? Like we're par- like, you don't have kids. And then like, they were all like, oh no, you got to watch Japanese cartoons with your kids it's way better than any american trash i'm like it's about hawaii or the pacific islands it's not even american they were pointing out the satanic imagery in it it was so weird oh that's fun and lighthearted. yeah Yeah. or they were (laughs) and then they were like oh two grown men that like uh keep them away from your children i'm like what the hell yeah you literally can't live in florida man (laughs) yeah you can try to make a nice video and you get called a pedophile that's fun yeah people have yeah i know people have fucking completely lost their minds like you know there's i'm sort of friends with and i've collaborated with a bunch of other like parent creators and stuff and it's just you know we have like some group message things on on instagram and it's just like it's like are you seeing this too like what's going on lately and it's just like across the board it's the comments that have just gotten completely out of control for you know you literally can't can't do a video about anything i was talking with one this one lady we're uh collaborating with a couple people doing some some pretty cool stuff coming up um some toddler content and uh she was uh had some hateful messages on like such an innocent video and then um i was like yeah it's gotten crazy lately and she goes yeah you could literally make a video about just of the sky and people would have something to say and i would go yeah you could do a video of the sky and people would call it ground shaming (laughs) well we had one we had one video we put out where we were like yeah it's really important to be on the same page with your wife especially going into childbirth and just kind of agreeing on everything and sometimes letting her have her way. And we had a bunch of people who were like, no, you're the man. She's your slave. Like, she doesn't get to question what you want to do about childbirth. And I'm like, she's the one having the kid. Oh, that sounds like a well-adjusted guy. Like, that, that, guy drive, that guy drives an orange Dodge Ram, by the way. you can do, I can tell. <laughs> I drive an orange Dodge Ram, but. <laughs> do you really? <laughs> it, no, it's not orange. It's, it's burgundy red, but. Uh... Oh. A little less psychotic. I don't get into cars because I, I work in automotive too. So I'm on the, I don't know what you do for automotive, but I'm uh, in retail, automotive retail. So okay. I don't, I try not to car shame just because it's my job. Yeah, I know. Well, I've gotten into that too. My my whole channel actually started as a car channel. That's what the heated seats thing is. So I had a podcast that I did for about a year and a bit. Um, and that the whole thing started as, as car content. That's what I was doing. Uh, I started yeah. in March of 2020, which uh, if you fondly remember, that's when COVID started. Um, and then I did that. And then, you know, I started doing the parenting stuff. I, I downloaded TikTok like every, you know, idiot who's in their, you know, late 20s or 30s. I downloaded TikTok during the pandemic just for fun. And um, it, was fun. it was funny. My sister actually was the one who was like, you should do it. I feel like you could be big on it. And I was like, nah, that's so, that's so dumb. It's like all these people fucking dancing and shaking their asses and stupid yeah. stuff. And then I realized like, oh, this is actually a decent form for, you know, posting content. And then I started doing the dad content on TikTok, and it was pretty much just exclusively car content on Instagram. And I would post the occasional sort of parenting video on, on Instagram. And it would get like I literally remember it would they get, they get like eleven hundred views, where yeah. where my car videos were getting forty to fifty thousand consistently. It was just like yeah, I'm just I was like I'm just not in the algorithm, but I was like you know what? I'm just gonna keep pushing through, and just maybe one day it'll eventually pop. And then like for some some reason, three months ago I went from twenty or eighteen thousand followers to what I'm at now, which is over one hundred and thirty. Happened in like yeah. two months, and the, the parenting content just hit for some reason. And now it's, I pretty much exclusively do, do the parenting content. Cause it's what, you know, it's, I don't do the car content much anymore. Cause I don't have uh, you know, a sports car anymore. I had, I used to have sports cars all the time. I would have, you know, I had owned a couple of Corvettes and I had a Camaro as well. And it was, you know, I was at car meets and I was in that world. Right. And now it's just, yeah. I'm in the parenting world. I don't go to car meets. I don't have a sports car. And you know, it's just my, my brain, my dad brain, if you will, is you know constantly just I, I mean i wake up in the middle of the night and i write notes down in my phone I'll, you know i'll think of an idea right that's it's it's obsessive sometimes but like and they make no sense fucking make no sense sometimes you know th- two two o'clock in the morning when my kid happens to not wake up i'll you know think of an idea write it down on my phone and then i go the next morning and i go what the fuck is diarrhea olympics like i have no idea what this <laughs> is 
I love it though. I love but it. But I write down <laughs> every idea that I think of just because you never know, you know, what is going to, what's going to hit or what I could actually make into a, a decent piece of content. Was it always like comedy for you with your content? Because I mean, you were talking about like the Heated Seats podcast and the car content. Like, where does the comedy aspect come from? Were you ever trying to be like sincere and like actually like, helpful, or was it always? Oh, just comedy? never. No, I'm one of the least helpful people you'll probably ever meet. Um, <laughs> it was always it was always comedy. You know, I I, I it was yeah. You know, I I, I was start, I started roasting people's cars actually. Um, which is funny. You talked about car shaming. That's what that's that was how my account first got big. Um, okay. Was was roasting people's cars. I would have hundreds of people a day send me pictures of their cars and be like, "Roast my car." Go no, it me. was. And it, it honestly got a little bit exhausting because you know people are so sensitive about about some of that stuff that I, I was getting a lot of like nasty messages and comments and stuff, and I was just like, "This is exhausting. I, I can't keep doing this." And, it, you know, roasting people's cars and stuff like it was fun at, the, at when I first started and it just got a little crazy. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll try to have some, you know, aspect of, you know, maybe being helpful or, or you know, but always it's always about, you know, getting a laugh or having a, a comedic spin on it for sure. Yeah. And is this never ventured into like wanting to do stand-up comedy or anything i've done, or I've, like, done this is your I actually, I've done i've done stand-up i actually went to there's a believe it or not there's a comedy program at a college up here uh okay. it's a two-year program that i went to um so i did two years of university um decided i would really like the program and i wasn't loving the the classes and stuff so i actually dropped out and then i joined i went to this comedy college for two years which is basically just a giant long summer camp um where there's literally the classes like there's improv classes there's stand-up classes uh there's actually a class called clowning where it's you you're just physical comedy you're not actually speaking it's you're only using your body like mr bean type stuff to to get to get a laugh there's writing classes there's acting classes i mean it was it was like that for two years which was it was awesome and part of the requirement is you had to be you had to go at yuck yucks which is a big um comedy club up here um you had to go do a show at yuck yucks a minimum of once a month um i was doing it a lot more oh, than wow. that i was doing it weekly plus going out and doing other open mics but for the people because i like doing stand-up and that was kind of my thing but it was a nightmare for people who weren't there for that there was people who were only there sort of for improv or for the acting stuff and they still had to go up and do stand-up but i was there mostly for stand-up and it, you know i had a lot of funny Met a lot of funny people who are some of them are still doing it. I, I, you know, don't have the, the time or the, you know, the guts even really to, to do it anymore. I have done it occasionally. And I still quite enjoy it. Uh, but this, you know, the, the online thing, it's, um, you know, it's, it's such a, it's a much easier way to, to reach people. And it's, it, you know, it's, I can think of a video on my way home, film it when I get in my driveway and post it. Right. Stand up takes years of doing it every day to be even remotely good at it. So it's, uh, but I have done it though. I, I did probably 150 sets or something in the, in the two years that I was oh, wow. there. Um, I wasn't very good to be honest, but I, I you know, I had, I'd still had, had some pretty good jokes and, and a lot of fun doing that. I was going to ask you a question about your process, right? But you kind of explained it right there. Like something happens in front of you or you have that, like, moment when you're sleeping you're awake wakes you up right like that's what i really love about your content it just seems so in the moment yeah like like i never i think that you know sometimes i'll post a video a few days after recording it but it's usually the same day it's whatever happens i never have a backlog i have no videos recorded right now i'm i'm running by the skin on you know skin of my teeth every single day i've done i've done you know a thousand a thousand over a thousand posts on instagram and probably double that on TikTok. And it, I, never once have I had it ready more than like two days in advance. I love that. Yeah, that's, that's just awesome. so DIY. It, that short form media, like you can just like random moments out of the day. That's your clips. That's awesome. Exactly. So you're definitely you definitely think you're funnier now that you're a dad, right? I would say so. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. you know, it's it's definitely especially with doing this all the time. It's kind of honed my you know the craft, if you want. That's a cheesy thing to say, but 
you know, it's, <laughs> it's once you kind of figure out, you know, how, how it works and what works and what doesn't, you know, it's the thing that I still don't, I still sometimes can't figure out is especially it's worse on TikTok. Instagram is a little more consistent, but TikTok is just like, I'll put, you know, like I got studio lights in here right now. This is where I film most of my stuff. Um, I'll put effort into, you know, writing a script for a video. I have a, you know, I have a, a good mic. I have lights. I'll post it at, you know, edit it. It's all this thing. It's a beautiful, you know, thing that I'm proud of. And it gets like 5,000 views. I'll post a seven second video of me ranting in my car and it gets one and a half million. I'm like, motherfucker. Like the ones that I actually put the the crazy effort into sometimes do the worst. Yeah. We, That's the we craziest have the part. Issue. It's the craziest part about being a creator, right? Cause you, you can't really pinpoint like why something like takes off. Yeah. And like that does, I mean, it like creates a new challenge every single time you're creating something. Yeah. And there's some, there's very rarely, there's sometimes where I'll, I'll go to post a video and I'll go, this one, this one's going to be good. And I'm right. It's, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but there's a few times it, it'll happen where I'm like, I think this one has the ability to, you know, has, has some legs or whatever. Cause it's, you know, it's, it's either original. Like when I started doing those toddler press conference videos, I those love went, those. That went crazy. The first one went bananas. I think it's like almost 20 million views on Instagram or something. That first one that I did, Man. which was the craziest part is the, the amount of people that were like sharing it and reposting it and stuff. Um, Big Sean and his wife, Janae Aiko, both posted it or both liked oh, it. Awesome. And she posted it on her story and stuff, which is like they're huge, huge in the music, in the music world. Right. Like ab- massive. It was you know, stuff like that, which was which was crazy that, that people were reposting that. But there's you know, when, when it's something that's super relatable that a lot of people are relating to at the same time, I get comments like that all the time of people being like, I've watched you since, you know, our, our kids are, you know, a week apart or two weeks apart. Um, and I've sort of watched and they're like almost watching me grow as a parent while their child and then they're going through the same stuff at the same time. Right. Like I said, you can always see what I'm going through based on what my content's about. They're like, you know when your son was doing the puking thing, ours was two and, and you know, the sleep regression thing. And then the, the eating solids thing and the baby led weaning, like people are all, they're, they're almost like growing as parents with my content, which is kind of cool. Um, and I get a lot of comments of uh, as well. You know, sometimes people DM me and stuff like thanking me, which is always kind of weird, but it feels pretty awesome when someone's like, you know, thank you for normalizing that it's hard. <laughs> being a parent because you know all these you know this 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 beige mom type you know trend or whatever you want to call it where like they're like here's the three hour routine i do every morning before my baby gets up i'm like what the fuck are you talking about nobody does that yeah like there's a trend recently that i've seen Uh where it's like here's what i do uh before my baby wakes up in the morning and it's people just sleeping and i fucking love that because it's like it's like totally (laughs) took that whole trend of like here's what i do with you know I put a, a a kale smoothie in my bamboo cup and you're like, Jesus Christ. Like, and then they just flipped it on its head and they're like, yeah, I fucking sleep because I'm tired. And you know, like, I, because I'm a normal person. Exactly. So it's, you know, people are, I don't have it's, a mate. it's so hard when you're looking at, you know, social media, that one of the bad parts about it is that you're always comparing yourself to this like idealistic way. And I, it's so much worse with parents, you know, these, these some of these parenting accounts or, or that type of thing where you're like, Oh my God, their, their whole life is so well lit and there's never a cloud and there's never a mess and all this stuff. Yeah. And you go, Oh, I'm, I must be a shit parent because you know, they're, you know, my kid doesn't sleep through the night or he's, you know, not saying this, you know, this many words or that type of thing. And that's kind of what I do is just like, Hey, this is the fucking hard shit about being a parent that, you know, kind of normalize that stuff. And people, people seem to relate to that. So that's, that that's fun for yeah, me you do that whole bit about how your kid should already know long division yeah yeah because like, the, the, yeah, the... like, like my wife's that kind of person too where she is all she's all into google webmd and the books and be like oh i should be like this by now and i'm like no i'm like maybe one person was like that i was like our doctor says you're fine relax and then that's why we started the podcast though is because Nobody like has a conversation about being a 30 something parent who's never done this before going into it, you know, blind. 
and it's nice to know that there's other people in the world having the same, you know, ridiculousness that yeah, we're having. Yeah, exactly. Or have gone through it already and you're like, yeah, you're, you're going to fuck yeah, it up. Like, like it's going to be, it's going to be miserable for oh, a while. hundred percent. You're going to make mistakes and you're going to fuck up and you're going to, you know, just have to learn from them. And, you know, one of the things that I found is, you know, every time we went through like a hard, like a difficult phase, you know, whether it was like the transition from, you know, taking taking the baby out of the bassinet into the crib or, you know, anything like that where there's a big transition where you get comfortable because something's working, right? Like we were like, fuck, the baby mm, sleeps yeah. well in the bassinet. You're like scared to transition to that next stage that they have to transition to because it's gotten comfortable or, or you know, you're like, you're just afraid to, to, to make that change. And then you make the change and you're like, oh, fuck, it wasn't really that bad. You know, that's, that's one of the things I find a lot with all these different phases that you go through where there's, you know, there's a major transition, like, you know, like the solid eating thing, or, you know, like when my wife, uh, you know, she was only able to breastfeed for, for like a little under four months. So we had to switch to formula. And then, you know, there's all these like transitions where you're just like, you get comfortable doing one thing one way, you know, you have to transition because, you know, your baby can't sleep in the bassinet forever and they can't eat purees forever. And then you make the transition and it's usually not as bad as you're like making it out to be in your head. Right. Like that, that's, that's one of the things that I, yeah, you get through it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not forever and you get through it. Um, you were talking about your wife does. So how is she with your comedy and like all this creator stuff? Like, is she helping out with it? Is she a part of it? Does, does she find she, I think she, I think she she finds it annoying. I'm sure there's some, some moments where she's like, God, would you just shut the fuck up? Like, I remember, <laughs> I remember one time we were, this is before we had, we had our son and we were, you know, hung over in bed on a Sunday one day, um, and just laying around and being lazy. And I, I was just talking, cracking jokes, whatever, just rambling. And she looks at me and she goes, I love you, but you don't stop talking. And I was like, oh, fuck. All right. Yes. Cool. 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 Yeah. But, um, you know, she's, not, she's the opposite of me in terms of like, attention and social media and stuff like she doesn't she has you know private really? accounts and stuff but she very rarely posts um she basically you know whenever i have a i don't post my son um uh, on any of my of the public forums i have a private account with which yeah. you know family and friends and that type of thing where i'll post pictures of him and i tag her and then she just reposts my stories <laughs> so it's you know she's um yeah not a social media person at all she does find me funny i think and then, you know, a lot of the stuff where it's like, you know, I'll pretend to be her in a video as well is, you know, those, a lot of those are real conversations and real things that happened where um, it was, you know, like, like the, I think I did one the other day where it was, you know, when the baby sleeps well and you don't want to address it. So you're just sort of like, like just staring at each other kind of like, and you, yeah, like, not saying the words, right but you words. don't want to say, it, but you don't want to say it. Like that was a, that was a real conversation that we had where she was like, I go, I made a comment to it. Like we were just kind of like, who like not acknowledging it. And then I like made a comment. She was like, no, 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 shut up, shut up. Like, don't, don't say don't it. Say don't it. even bring it up. So yeah, a, a lot of the ones where like she's in it or, you know, I'm pretending to be her playing her character or whatever. A lot of those, you know, real conversations, real things that happened. And, and, you know, just like with my son, it's, it's all stuff that's based on my life. And that's why it's like, you can see exactly what phase I'm in because it's, again, it's real stuff that happened either that day or that week. Um, and it's, uh, you know, again, that's just, I'm just sort of displaying my life in, in a, in a funny way, um, without actually posting my son, which is another thing that I was kind of proud of, um, is, is that, cause you know, it's, could, could my account be bigger if I, you know, was one of those like sharing accounts potentially yeah. right but i just it's just not Maybe. a decision that it, you know my wife and i had this conversation early on when i started making these this content it was like yeah it's that's not something we're gonna do and again no shame to people who do because there's you know there's people who who do it who that's stop shaming who, who are good at it there's people <laughs> you know they make a living doing that that's their whole thing but that's just a decision that my wife and i made early on was to not uh, not post him on on public forums thanks for listening to another episode of dad brain new episodes come out every sunday don't miss any subscribe today wherever you listen to podcasts while you are there help spread the word about dad brain by leaving a rating and review can't get enough dad brain follow us on instagram tiktok and youtube at dad brain pod